You're getting ready to do your first through hike. Well, let me give you five tips that can help you on your resupplies. Hey, I'm Greg and welcome to the channel. This is my first video after being back from my Appalachian Trail through hike. And I wanted to give you guys some tips when it comes to doing resupplies. I found out that resupplies can be frustrating, they can be costly, and they can be really time consuming. But I think these five tips are something that's gonna help save you on all three. So tip number one, check the hiker box. Now, when you go into town, whether if it's a Nero or Zero or multiple Zero or you get Vortex, a lot of places that you're going to stay, whether it's a hostel or a hotel, especially in those big hiker towns, will have something called a hiker box. What's a hiker box? It could be anything from a small Tupperware container up to a closet filled with gear, food and equipment that other hikers have gotten rid of. I've seen anything from uh, Merrill camping shoes, like the, the clog type ones, uh, to rain jackets, to BRS stoves, uh, all sorts of food in the hiker boxes. So before you buy anything during your resupply, check the hiker box first. A lot of times you're gonna find things that, well, you're gonna need especially things like Ziploc bags. You know, when you buy a box of Ziploc bags, most of the times they have 20 or more Ziploc bags in there, and you don't need 20. But if you check the hiker box, maybe somebody went there before you and put some in there. So check the hiker box for things like that. You'll also find where people will discard things like uh, mashed potatoes or ramen or tuna packets. And this is especially true the farther I got north on the Appalachian Trail when people got tired of eating those things day in and day out. So if you're still interested in things like that, check the hiker box because it could save you some time and some money. Something else you'll see in the hiker box also are partially used fuel canisters. Uh, I know I did it myself, especially before I went into the 100-mile uh, wilderness. Uh, I got rid of my fuel canister because it was about eh, halfway uh, filled. And I knew being out there for six, seven, eight days, uh, I was definitely going to need a full fuel canister heading out. So I bought a new one and I got rid of my partial one. Now, one thing I wish I would have brought with me... Um, but I didn't because, well, I was being a gram weenie, is this device here. So you're asking, what is this? Well, I got this off of Amazon, and what you do is you're able to put the uh, canister that you want to transfer from up here, the canister that you want to transfer to screws in down here, and then you open the valve and let it flow down, filling the bottom canister. This was like 15 bucks off of Amazon, and really it doesn't weigh much. But if I would have brought this, not only could I save myself cash, I could have saved those others around me cash, and who knows, maybe overall, this could have been worth hundreds of dollars. Um, I'm kind of regretting not taking this because uh, I, I could have just had one fuel canister the whole time. Uh, those uh, hiker boxes were usually littered with partially used fuel cans. Now, when I'm at home using this, I use a scale with it so I can tell how much fuel is in there by the, the net weight and the gross weight so I can just measure it or weigh it uh, while you know, I'm doing the filling process. The other way to do it you know, in a less exact method is on the side of just about all the canisters, if you float this in water, it will indicate by how far it's in the water how full it is. So although not as scientific as weighing it, um, 
better than just kind of filling it and praying you got it right. So this way here would help out a lot on the trail. So if you are interested in this, this specific model is the G-Works Gas Saver. Uh, and I'll put a link below to, uh, to Amazon. Hopefully I can find something similar to this so you guys can check it out. But this goes down as one of the pieces of gear I wish I would have brought because uh, it would have really helped out myself and my friends. And speaking of friends, go shopping with a buddy. Why do I say that? Well, let's go back to the Ziploc baggies. You know, they come in packages of like 10, 20, 40 Ziploc baggies, which you don't need that many. However, if you're shopping with a friend or friends or family members, what have you, or, you know, maybe it's somebody who you just met at the hostel and is going to do a resupply. Get with them to see if you can share the cost on things, whether it's Ziploc baggies or maybe breakfast essentials or even fruit snacks or something like that. Uh, a lot of these things come in a quantity too large for a four or five day resupply. But if you can share that with somebody and split the cost, not only you're going to save some time and you're going to save some money, but you're not going to waste the stuff because what you would probably end up doing is taking the, the stuff that you don't need and putting it, putting it in the hiker box. So when you're out doing your resupply, keep this in mind as well. And this is tip number four, keep it fresh. What do I mean by that? Don't buy the same things over and over and over. And you can do this right from the very start. So even though you love garlic instant mashed potatoes, by the time you get into that third or four month of the through hike, or maybe even less, you're gonna freaking hate them. I guarantee you because I saw hiker boxes filled with stuff like that. So keep it fresh, change up your diet, try something new and be creative. And also when you keep it fresh, don't be afraid to pack out some fresh foods. So when you're doing the resupply of the day you're leaving, go to the deli counter, get a sandwich and take that for lunch or dinner. I packed out fried chicken on many times, uh, fresh fruits and vegetables. I packed out oranges and avocados and even, you know, cut up watermelon. It really does make a big difference when you're out on trail to have something like that at the end of the day. It makes you a lot happier and feel a lot better. Don't be afraid also to try different foods. I heard the suggestion, I tried it and now I'm a big fan and that's taking Hot Pockets. That's right, Hot Pockets. They're good for at least two days. I heard people say that they're good for three days. You know, they're not nice and crispy as if you warmed them up in the microwave, but you know, it's a little ham and cheese sandwich or you get a little pizza sandwich uh, and it's not bad. You know, a couple of those for lunch, fantastic. Easy, no mess, not a lot of uh, leftover uh, wrappers and things like that. And it's a good variety. One thing I enjoyed doing as well is taking hot dogs the night before I would go back on trail and freeze them, get up the next day, pack them up with some rolls and the rolls would get, they would get squished along the way, but that's okay. And at the end of the night, cut the hot dogs in half so they fit in my cook pot. And there you go. I've got hot dogs for dinner. I can, you know, score some mustard packs or relish packs or whatever you like. Uh, from a convenience store or something like that and take those with you and it really is a nice way to, to finish off the day and When you're doing your resupply also just keep in mind There's gonna be a lot of times where you're not going to get your Freeze-dried meals your peak refuels your mountain house or something like that In fact a lot of times it's gonna be a dollar general and that's where you got to get your uh, your food from so you know, treat yourself once in a while. And even though some of those dehydrated meals can be a little costly, treat yourself and go ahead and pick up one or two, you know, every so often. Yeah, they're kind of bulky and, you know, they maybe weigh a little bit more than a pack of ramen noodles and some tuna. But yeah, it's a nice little change of pace. And once again, you're keeping things fresh. One thing I would do when I went to a Walmart to resupply is to go back to their uh, camping section and they always they always have mountain house meals uh, so I would check them over and of course keeping caloric value at the top of my head I would find which one had the most calories and usually grab a couple of those so you know yeah once in a while treat yourself 
Speaking of treating yourself, this brings me to tip number five, and that's use resupply boxes if you can. So if you're lucky like me and you've got some folks back home that are there cheering you on and supporting you, make up some resupply boxes ahead of time. Uh, there's an article on the Trek, and I'll put that link below, that talked about six places to send resupply boxes on the Appalachian Trail. And actually, I use that myself. Uh, looking back, there's some other places I would have included uh, besides those six, like uh, Hot Springs, North Carolina, that would have been a good one. They have a small grocery store there, a Dollar General, and then there is an Outfitter. A little bit more costly at the grocery store and the Outfitter. And you could have saved some money if you would have uh, just sent a resupply box there instead. Uh, a lot of times, like my resupply box didn't cover everything that I liked or everything that I wanted. Uh, so I'd have to supplement, you know, usually locally. Uh, but... It did save me a lot of time and effort and money uh, in the long run. So uh, when you look, if you look at the, uh, the article there about the Appalachian Trail, uh, go down and read the comments to see if other people talk about different places that they would resupply from. Uh, just keep in mind this, the farther you go north, the more expensive things get as well. So you might want to do that, even though there might be an REI and a grocery store and a bunch of places like that that you can easily resupply from. If you want to save a little bit of money, do your resupply box there as well. And, uh, and then supplement locally if you need to. And if you are going to do the resupply boxes, uh, I'd recommend getting started now, keeping your eyes out for sales like at REI or uh, Sierra Trading Post or Backcountry.com, things like places like that, uh, and, and maybe save a couple of bucks if you start buying now. The other thing is, you know, if you uh, if you celebrate uh, Christmas, you know, tell your family and friends you want re you want you know backpacking meals. Uh, that's a perfect Christmas gift, in my opinion. Uh, ask him for one of those, you know, the gas savers. Uh, yeah, there's a lots of, uh, a lot of options out there between now and whenever you start your through hike. So there we go. That are, those are my five tips for you. Uh, if you've got ideas also, please comment below. Well, I'd love to hear them. Trust me, I am not the end-all be-all of backpacking knowledge. Uh, Got some other videos in mind coming up here in the future. Uh, I kind of joked when I was on trail about, you know, milking the Appalachian Trail for at least five years worth of contact, content when I was done. Uh, maybe two years. I don't know. But I am going to have some more things that I'm going to post about my time on the Appalachian Trail and what I've learned and hopefully can benefit you. Hopefully, you know, my mistakes you can uh, you you won't make the same uh, same mistakes when you do a, a hike or a through hike or a section hike or whatever it may be. Um, I am still going to get out there. I am going to do uh, hiking videos. Uh, in fact, this weekend I'm going out to hike two segments of the Colorado Trail, and I uh, will post those up later. Um, but that's about it for me. Uh, once again, to all of you that follow me during my uh, my journey, thank you very much for being here. Uh, love your comments. Uh, now that I'm back, I can respond to them a lot easier. And hopefully the content or the quality of my videos are going to be better as well. Uh, with that said, we'll talk to you soon. Shit. <laughs>